Oh. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. <laughs> that part of him lived on. <laughs> Fish tank? Very psychedelic in here, Lewis. Red King's Dream. Bunch of recorded tapes. Conspiracy? Now? Sam Ray's Wedding. Oliver Twist. Faust. Locker contents? Oh, from the cannery. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, Whoa. I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Ugh. Oh, Jesus. He kept working at the time. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Wander? Wait. Can I grab that? No? Wander. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm controlling... The wizard guy and the fish. I asked um, him to describe it. Concerned. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Oh, fish. What? But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. Whoa! I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. Oh no. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. Give me a fish. He told me he'd made a new friend. Oh. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topi. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. Uh. Oh my! And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. Uh, I don't know about this. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds 
even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. Ah! And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Oh, here. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New uh. Louisville. Oh. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Wow. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. He's just gone. He's just in his own world. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... handsome queen. Queen was on her own quest for no happiness. We're doing happy, happy things. Radiant rainbows. Uh. He followed the sound of her electric guitar. <laughs> Electric sitar. Yes. That sounds like something Lewis would be very into. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained ah! sound. The world was all in his imagination. Oh my god. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. hard to argue with him. Lewis? Oh, man. I relate to this because I think I would go absolutely insane if I worked like a, a monotonous factory job like that. And when I worked retail, uh, I would occupy my mind by... Um, going through like stories in my head just like stories I was working on writing he began to forget the world we know Lewis I think it pained him to remember Lewis the cannery worker wait are we looking at ourselves right now
he began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Lewis, no. No! I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Oh, man. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. Oh, Molly the cat! What? His queen waited, holding his crown. There's only one thing left to do. Accept it. Bend down his head. <gasps> what? No! No, no, no! Holy shit! God. Oh my God. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Oh my God. Holy shit. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. <sighs> Damn! I keep hitting that button. It's not the button to close. Oh, shit! Lewis! Oh my god. I worry about that sometimes being lost in my own head, but I'm not that. That's on a whole other level. Holy frick. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She oh. waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. Oh. Oh no, what happens to Edie? I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I think she was trying to make it easier. Oh no. I wish we'd stayed. Left her alone. But I understand why we left. Edith, 
called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Literally everything. Happy 90th. Sanjay. Disaster relief. Oh, did he die in that earthquake? What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Oh, do I want to know? <laughs> Norwegian folk tales. That whole last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together. And all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. <laughs> power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Oh, we are going to see the library. Or that Edie had a key to it. of sand, king of yellow, Swedish folk tales. We've seen these books around. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Fish and shellfish. There's a bed in here? Who the heck is sleeping Edith in here? He has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. They're not dead because of her stories. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay? Yeah, that is not gonna happen. Realize I need that. Who slept in here? Did Edith sleep in here? History of the Finches by Edie. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. Are we it was the first and last time I 
ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. <laughs> oh, I've seen that house every day of my life. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I'm just gonna keep walking straight. <laughs> I got turned around. For a while, I wondered. I started seeing things. What deer? Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith. Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! kicked and screamed, but mom dragged me to the car. Do you have the rest of the book? I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. Yeah. Yeah, I caught that. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. <laughs> a few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. Oh, no. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes and appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. Really? I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. Oh. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Oh.
This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. They're little kid pictures. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the developer was hoping to do when they made this. What kind of story they were trying to tell. That is one of those things. I'm glad she said I know it's hard, because that is one of those things that that I struggle with. I know the lesson is that we should all we should just be amazed that we're here at all and not be sad about what happens to people, but it is, it is really sad. And I, I know what the lesson is, but I definitely, I haven't got there yet. <laughs> this was a really interesting game. I'm glad that I played it. And as a narrative game, I definitely enjoyed it, but man, that is... It gets, it gets heavy. But yeah, all these different characters trying to figure out the best way to deal with everyone dying. I think Edith's the only one that really figured it out. In its nascent form, What Remains of Edith Finch was a scuba diving simulator inspired by Dallas's memories of growing up in Washington State. Presumably, what it felt like looking at the ocean sloping away into the infinite darkness, but in attempting to capture the sensations Dallas had experienced, Giant Sparrow hit its first snag. It's hard to tell a story while scuba diving. Who likes talking? <laughs> like, who's talking? Where are the stakes? Where's the ticking clock? All these things that had any story has to grapple with were hard to do. Wanted to evoke the sublime horror of nature. Molly's story was to give the sublime horror a comedic edge. Yeah, I feel that. Oh, apparently they spent a long time on the sequence at the sh at the fish factory. And making making that work as in gameplay. That was one of the more difficult things to do. Until the desperate parts came together during the late stages of development, he admits it didn't seem like it would be an emotionally demanding game to play. So it looks like they made this game, it wasn't it's not like a commentary on life or death, it's just the sublime horror of nature, which I guess is life and death. I'm not sure what they were going for, but it was good to play. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, and um, thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Consider giving a like or leaving a comment. The YouTube algorithm favors engagement, so doing one or both of those things really helps the channel. There's social media links in the description and a link to my tip jar if you're interested in helping out that way. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the next one.